14th of April 2022. And we know this day, and we want to say assalamu alaikum to all we Muslim brothers and sisters there where they all around the world. Um, today we we continue again with our topic that we all know we have a project that has to do with the unification of Africa and Africans as a whole. Um, we have our special guest with us that we've been waiting for, and he is one of our Muslim brothers that, um, by God's grace, we will learn so much from him, and he will be a blessing to us. So welcome. God bless you all. Thank you very much for having me, my sister. Thank you so much, my brother, for um, giving us uh, your time out of your busy schedule to be part of us. Our brother, um, our topic continues because we are looking for, you know, um, Africa has been, we've been suffering through a pandemic that uh, maybe we are not conscious of. And uh, one of them are the pandemic of migration. You know, um, now that you yourself, you are Sierra Leone living in the West, so, um, and the benefits and, 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 and the advantages that the youth have been going through through this journey of life, more especially migrating to foreign lands, passing through the Mediterranean, taking risks to travel to the West. Do you have anything to say about Well, um, to be honest with you, you know, too much suffering um will make somebody anything now it's hard for you to put um, um yourself in the shoes of someone else. you know um some people believe that by doing this taking this risk you know if they succeed they don't look at what they're gonna go through the sacrifice if need what they're gonna do for the family because you see it's really hard to wake up every morning and, and you are a grown man or a grown woman and you're living in your parents' house and you're still suffering and suffering and you know you have little brothers and sisters and they're all looking up to you so if your if your country or your background is not that strong you know things happen like the war in Sierra Leone you know ever since the war a lot of things are not, not in place. So things just keep going down, going down, going down. And it forces the heart, you know, it develops your mind to take this risk. So we may say anything that we want to say. You may say how risky it is. You may say how, how bad it is, like how bad they treat people and all that. It's a green light. Struggle, they're willing to take it. They're willing to die for. There are people that are willing to die for causes that don't even have no, no effect. So imagine now somebody that is looking at his own family and at everybody behind him, and he want to prove something and he want to do something. So you see, it's certain topics it's like, like I just don't want to talk to about them because I don't know what that person is going through. So yes, so I be risky might be all this trouble and troublance that we're talking about we fight for the right way but my sister when somebody might up there's nothing you can do there's nothing you can say can you imagine some of them didn't even say goodbye to their family they disappear mm, mm. So, see so i don't know if you ask me say anything about it's, that it's, it's, it's a difficult question i can understand you my brother you you know, this is why we are here. Want different opinions because we all we 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 all fighting to achieve the goal of unifying Africa, and for us to be um uh, to for us to uh, exactly express our opinions on issues like this that has to do with what is bothering us. Why are we even leaving our nations in the first place? Like now, um, we see in, in, in Africa, a lot of young people, are, uh, most of them, I should say, are already graduated from uh, that, that's where I went to school, even not being uh, uh, graduate, but they went to school. Um, is it because they have been um, less skills or less vocational trainings? Because another thing to my brother, going to school education, 
education in the West, we realize that they're not going to school, uh, uh, um, uh, academical education, yet they, they all has vocational training. This is that we think it's difficult for them to find a job in This certificate, graduation, four years in college, you get your master's degrees and stuff like that, um, it's good. But trust me, that's not an education. That's something that you're going to learn or you're going to do what you're going to do. Like you said, um, you're going to end up to be in your workplace after you graduated. And this is the problem with Africa. Africa now, we don't have enough infrastructure. Okay, I'm going to only speak for Sierra Leone for now because that's my country. You understand? Um, I understand it's the government place, you know? To to set the um to set the land, let me say as a trap. Mm -hmm. So when I say as a trap, they should focus on investing in the land, like make the land attractive. You see, America, like Acon said, Acon described America the best way. You see, America is like a it's like a picture. You understand? So from a distance, you see this picture all in one. It's nice. It's beautiful. You see the lights and everything, right? But the more you come closer, this picture start turning to a puzzle. So the more you come closer, the more you realize there are pieces missing from the puzzle. But when you look in it from far, all you see is a picture, a beautiful picture. So you see, Sierra Leone, for example, we have nice beaches, right? We have nice mountains. We have nice, uh, 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 we have all the 22 minerals, I would say. So if the government can focus on what we have, you understand what I'm saying? And sacrifice and develop what we have, and that will be an attraction for people to come to Sierra Leone and invest. Look like Dubai. See what they did? It's a desert. But they sacrifice. They make it. Now everybody want to go see. This is what we need. You see my point? So if we can do this, then for real, government will be able to provide jobs for people who are graduating, who are not even graduating. NGOs, investors, they will be able to come and open factories and stuff, and there will be more jobs for people in the country. So the exactly, problem is exactly, 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 my brother. You know, um, you know, you just measure exactly the next questions I wanted to ask you it was about infrastructure. And we yes, you already you already answered the question, but now we're talking about um uh, production industries and, and all this, you know, because we realize now that we have a lot of foreign investors in Sierra Leone as a country, for example. What is going on? Have you been hearing? Are they creating jobs for the youth? Are they adding any value to our country? What is going on in that area? Do you have any? No. You got to understand. My part in all this is the religious aspect of it. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not looking at things as... I'm, I'm not talking to you as a politician because I'm not. I'm not talking to you as a as somebody who's living in Sierra Leone, because I'm living in America right now. Mm -hmm. So I can't I can say to something that I'm not witnessing. You see what I'm saying? Um, so I don't know that part. I can't give you anything, because you will have to talk to somebody who's living down there and mm -hmm. who have examples and who have witnessed these things, because you, you need the truth out here. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, definitely tomorrow we're getting someone that is that is living in Sierra Leone and we are also blessed that she's also a Muslim lady 
And she's a very intelligent, hardworking young lady. And I've met her personally in Sierra Leone, and I saw the great work that she's doing already. So, you know, as you said, this is not your question because you are not in the shoe, you know? So uh, we understand that, my brother, but you know, as we're talking about developing our nation, don't you think that um, our mindset, the mindset of the citizens, uh, uh, is also responsible, or, or we we are responsible as religious bodies and and other NGOs, and so to to educate and change the mindset of the people. Well, that's exactly what I thought I was here for. Exactly. Um, so now you now you're really touching my part. You know, my part is to um, to 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 heal the heart to put more light in the heart of the Muslims and to motivate our brothers and sisters, you know, so we can keep ourselves through the Sirat al-Mustaqim, which is the straight path of God. Um, so if you ask me a question like that, then I feel like you want to sit back and relax because I have a lot to say. <laughs> okay, so just go ahead because we really need this. We really need the, we really need your love and advice and encouragement, more especially to the young ones, and and give, to give them hope for their their future. Go ahead, sir. Um, I'm, I'll, how much time we have? Um, you still have some more ten minutes to go touch on this your topic. Just go ahead. You fine. All right. Um, may God bless us all. I Alhamdulillah. آيانا بعد معمتنا وإلى النشور يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا رب العالمين يا شاف المرسلين سيدنا وعبينا وعبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى عليه وأسابه وأزواجه ومن ولا أما بعد فإن أستك لديس كتاب الله وكير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شغ الأمور مكتتدها وكل مكتتة بيدة وكل بيدة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار يا أيوة الكرام وأقوى السيدات السلام عليكم um sister let may God bless us all and um first of all I want to thank you and your management you know for having me here um it's an honor you know to come and um talk to the youth to my brothers and sisters especially in this month of Ramadan um to to light up our hearts and you know so that we can stay strong stay firm and continue you know to strive for the right things in this world it is not easy with all the temptation that are going on all around the world but you see examples like um me and you right we did this last year i think it was in the month of ramadan again same time this month, yes. And Alhamdulillah, we are here again to do the same thing. You know, sometimes the example, the clean example, the example of yourself is the best example you can give to somebody. You see, we did this last year and we are here today again to do the same thing. It means that we are people that don't give up. It means that we are people that want to see the world change. We are people that want to make a difference in the world. You see, it's not me and you. We still have the same problems that everybody is carrying. The world is so strong today. Even the person who's rich is going through a lot. Mm -hmm. So beside what me and you are going through, beside what me and you are facing, we still make time to meet here, to talk about issues, to see how we can help verbally. And by the power of God, maybe God will help these people, our people to listen and to hear and to, you know, to join us. Or even if not join us, to create their own ways and leave their own beautiful marks in this world. Build a better, gen a better beautiful um, future for the next generation. So. I'm happy for you. I'm happy to see you here. I'm happy to see you still going. And I'm happy to see you still have the courage. You have the smile on your face. It is not easy. 
A lot of people start doing stuff like this and they fall. It's not easy. Because you see, you're talking to people and they're not even listening. You don't even know if they're getting the message. But you're just still doing what you're doing. That takes God. That's a very beautiful example. It's people like you that um, should be in power. You see what I'm saying? It's people like you that should be leaders because you don't give up. That's what a leader does. A leader makes sacrifice for his people and they don't give up. So I'm using you as an example. So whoever is listening to us to know that what you're doing is serious because you see, they cannot leave what they're doing or what they're facing for five minutes, 10 minutes to listen to your broadcast or your program. But you still don't give up. You still love them. You're still calling them. You know who did this? Jesus did this. You know who did this? Abraham did this. You know who did this? Noah did this. Alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam did this. Jesus called his people. He called them. He called them. He called them. At the end, what did they plan to do? To kill him. Noah called his people. He called them. He called them. He called them. The man lectured for 800 years. How many people listened to him? 80 people. Did he give up? No, he did not give up. But when the reckoning of God came, he can only save the ones that listened to him. So you see, don't give up, my sister. Whatever you're doing here is important. God made you this way. He built you this way. He programmed you this way. So you will have this patience, this courage, this love to give, to call, to direct, to entertain, to make, to get the people to the right part. Whether they listen, whether they don't listen, it's up to them and God. But you came to this world and you play your part. That's a blessing. And it's going to be on record. That you did this. It's my not brother, my brother. So sorry about that. You just measure something, you know, you play your part. This is the point exactly that we are, because we really want to encourage everyone not to think about your financial status, your if you yourself, your my brother, you I, I really appreciate you because considering your 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 your, your, your appointment and everything you've been doing, but you take your time to be with us again today. Last year at this, um, almost the same time you will be with us. And this year, Alhamdulillah, you're still healthy and you're still with us here. You know, it takes the same love and sacrifice that we're talking about. I think this is the, 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 the main reasons why we are still doing what we are doing because we are sacrificing, as Allah said, as Jesus said, that we have to sacrifice to do something. So what are the sacrifices that we need to do as a nation? Just continue, my brother, to see uh, that the, the next generation be developed. Go ahead, sir. Um, the, this, this is simple. See, what I was getting to was um, all these prophets, they call these people, they call their people toward the right path, toward the straight path, to do the right thing, to stop all the evil things they're doing and do the right thing. Now, you see, when God creates us, he already gave us our hearts. And everything that we do in this world, let me put it this way, a human being has darkness and you have light. And then you have what we call the nafs, which is the mind. In the middle, the mind can override your heart. The mind can override your flesh. The mind can override your ruh, which is your soul. So if you want to take an action, right? And it's a bad action. Your mind can stop that action, can stop you from not doing what you're about to do. Have you ever noticed when you do something unmindfully and then somebody say, hey, are you okay? You say, oh, 
my mind was not even here. Mm -hmm. So you see what I'm saying? So anytime that your mind is not in control, what do you do? Chaos happen, right? Mm -hmm. You do, you, you go on balance. Mm -hmm. So your mind always needs to be focused, working, because you have your darkness on the one side, and then you have light on the other side. So the moment your mind is not there, one of these two things will take control. So that's why you have the mind to control. So that's why every human being is going to be, um, is going to be responsible for their actions. So now, God, when God wanted to create us, you understand? This is in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran. They say, what is called Rabbuka lil malaikatu in ilun fil ardi khalifa. He said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels that he want to create a khalifa, a leader for this earth, khalifa mean uh, like what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. You are a mother, you have your husband, you guys have kids. So you guys are the leader for now. And as time goes on, you guys go and your kids, they take over. And your mm -hmm. kids, as time goes on, they go again. And then they own, your grandkids, they come and they take over. That's how the family keep going. So me and you right now, we are great, 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 great grandkids of somebody, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So that's what they mean by Khalifa. So when God said this to the angels, the angels, they replied to God. They say, Kolu, I tell you, Alu Fiha, man, you see, do Fiha, or Yaksifu, Fima, or 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 see, do like. They said, um, Are you going to create, put a position in the earth, um, a creation that are going to cause harm and going to um, kill each other? you know, co commit mischief on the earth. While we are here, we praise you. You see what I'm saying? We sanctify you. So the angels were concerned because they already see an example from the devils, the jinn, the bin kind, which we call demons and devils, Satan um, origin and his people. They were the one living in this earth and they were doing all sorts of rubbish. And God was not pleased, and He have them removed, and then He create us. This is what brings the the jealousy between Satan and human being. So the angels now they already have an experience because they were the one that came down here to remove this being kind. So they are asking God. They say, "Hold on, you creating another group of people or?" creation that gonna come cause the same problems guess what god said he said he said he knows him god he knows what they don't know so the angels they know that we're gonna cost what we're gonna kill each other we're gonna cost crime we're going to do all these evil things, right? God on the other side, he know that we are going to be intelligent people. I mean, what the angels are saying is not, they're not wrong. But on the other side, they're not looking at the intelligent part. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The intelligence that God puts in human being, they don't know about that because they themselves don't even have that intelligence yet. They haven't even have that discovery yet. They don't even know their names. So God created Adam and taught Adam all the names of things in this world, in this earth, in the heaven, and even the angels. And then he put Adam in front of the angels. And then he asked Adam, he asked the angels to name the things and name some of them to name themselves. They replied and said, I don't want to go back and forth with the Arabic um, part. It would take too long. 
They reply that they don't know nothing unless the knowledge that God has given them. This is the angels, including Satan. He was there among the angels. So then God asked Adam. And then Adam named all the things around them. And then God said, you see, didn't I tell you that I know what is in the secrets, what you hide, what is in the heaven? and the earth so you see my point so from what we would call today a now that we would describe is a name of a person animal place or thing that's the first knowledge that god gave adam and from that knowledge today you have science you have technology you have um, biology you have all this education around us today you see this is what god was taught, telling the angels that he know what they don't know you see my point now when god create the angels they only do what god say when he create the, the the devils he gave them the freedom to do whatever they want when he create human being he gave us the freedom to do whatever we want but he gave us intelligency. He gave us a light, a roof that no and no you and creation have. This is a special light from God Himself. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because you see, from the beginning of the creation of human being, they already know that they're gonna be a left side of us and a right side of us. And God knows this. Satan, the devil, who is tempting, whispering in our ears, all these bad thoughts, infrastructure, all these bad behaviors that our brothers and sisters, that me and you are exhibiting today, was created by God. Mm. All these human beings that are doing bad things in the earth, wicked politicians, people who are stealing, People who pray five times a day, people who worship God, people who go to church, people who build mosques, build schools, people who do good, we are all creations of what? God. Now, my sister, what I want to tell you is that if God don't want certain things to happen, he will not let that individual or that particular thing happen or leave. But it's so sorry, sorry about that. Sir. Go, sorry about that. Sir. You know, you just mentioned now something that is very, very, very important to us that if God does not want certain things to change or he will change the things the way he wants them, is do you want to uh, do you want to um, conclude or agree with me that is it that this is God's will for Africans to be where we are? Is it God's will? No, it's not. I'm coming to that. Go ahead. Now, God is in the position. So there's nothing that happens in the world without his command. A leaf doesn't drop without his command. Your heart doesn't take the next beat without the command of God. So everything in this world that happens, it happens because God wants it to happen. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, when you look out there, there are things that are out of our control. See my point? Mm -hmm. And there are things that are within our control. If the rain going to fall right now, can you stop it? No, really. Can any human being stop it? Mm -mm. Can any human being stop the sun from not rotating? No. If the sun decides not to come out today, is, is are you going to do anything about it? Mm -mm. Me and you are going to suffer, right? Yeah, exactly. If we woke up and there's no air to breathe, are we going to leave? Who no. died? Mm -hmm. When me and you are going to die, do you know that time? No, sir. No. But if I take a gun and shoot you, you die, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Fine. 
So will you if, call that the God's will if I die to no, no, go? No, no, no. I just told you two different things. Yes, there's sir. God's will. Mm -hmm. There are things that God is in control of, and there are things that God gave me and you permission to control. If I take a gun now and shoot you, who is in control? You. Fine. Ain't my head telling me shooting you is a bad thing? Mm. Didn't I tell you about the good side and the dark side inside the human being? Mm -hmm. See mm -hmm. my point? Everything mm -hmm. I've been telling you is one. But we're coming to it now. So you have a good side and a bad side of you. Now it's up to the mind to override your decision. You decided to do this program. Now there's another side of you that keeps telling you, man, why you keep doing this? People don't listen. People don't change. Man, just stop doing it. See, that's the dark side of you. That's the devil whispering in you. That's the devil coming in and playing his own part. This wall is a school. Me and you, we are students. Everybody around us is our classmates. Wherever we are, whenever God wants, he can test us. So it's up to you to listen to the right side of you and do the right thing and pass your test. So everything that happens in this world happened because that's how God wanted. But if God put you in a position and you have your mind, you have your dark side and your bright side, and you don't listen to yourself and do the right thing and patience and hold on, then you are doing this to the world. You're the mm. one making these bad decisions because of where you stop. Because of where you are. This is where God wants you. But this is not what God wants for you. The goodness that God wants for you is right in front of you. But you're in school. Is the teacher or the principal or the school going to give you your certificate, your degree, if you don't pass the test? Mm -hmm. Okay. How many schools have you heard that this school is bad? This school doesn't do good. The students are rough. The students are whatever, whatever they call the students, you know. But do you see these students graduate if they don't pass the test? No, they don't mm -hmm. pass the test. They don't graduate. You don't pass the test. You don't get certificates. You don't get honored. You don't have to wear the hat. You see my point? So the situation that we are, it's a test from God. But how we do, what we do to get out of that situation, to pass that test, it's all up to us. So our problem in the world today, Africa, everywhere in the world, is that me and you have to understand that we are in school. God is the owner. Me and you, we are slaves of God. Me and you, we are property of God. We have a mind that controls us, that we, con that we use to control ourselves. Because you see, if you want to drink, if you're thirsty right now, mm -hmm. and you don't grab your bottle of water or cup of water and drink, who's going to feel the pain? It's you yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to the bathroom and you keep holding it, who's going to be uncomfortable? yourself is it god no but god is the one that put you in the situation not so mm -hmm. he, created, he put you here so you can eat drink enjoy yourself but if you exactly. choose not to eat and drink who's gonna be uncomfortable you, you. yourself <laughs> so this is where we are this is the problem with human being we want to sit down relax in our in, in our comfort zone, you see what I'm saying? With our mess and our test, and don't want to read, don't want to study, don't want to improve our lives, and we want God or an angel or a miracle to happen. 
You woke up this morning because you have a program. You dress fine. Look at you shining right now. It's because you made an effort. If you were laying down on your bed and waiting for your boss to come wake you up and make up you and dress you like this, would you be here right now? No, sir. So this is our problem, my sister. This is oh, the my, sickness. My, my brother, you know, you just, you just, you just explain it all. You just conclude on all our questions for today because the questions we are all almost one by one and you the, um, Allah give you the supernatural wisdom and, and I think you read through my, my, my script I wrote down for you today because I really wanted you as a youth man, as a young man to, to explain to us things like this more especially spiritually not only physical things and you you did what we were expecting we really appreciate you, you know because what i learned here is everyone has to take your responsibility because most of the time we african lives in blame game we blame our leaders we blame the slave masters, even though we've been colonized over, uh, um, they've given us um, uh, uh, our, our freedom for over 60, 61, 62 different countries. Sierra Leone will be 61 years of independence, right? And we've got uh, gotten our freedom. Uh, imagine a 61 years old man or, or woman is no more a baby. So we are still we are still expecting the world to take care of us, to feed us. We live in uh, on donors. We live like babies living, uh, still drinking milk on feed bottles, which is sad for us. So is it time because we're coming to close? Uh, our program is coming to an end. Is it time for us to take our responsibility? Is everything that you've been preaching today does it comes to that point that we have to start taking our responsibility? I understand you. I mean, you said it. You you already got the point. You see, you're a very smart woman. I just gave you the pieces and you put it together. That's very smart. Thank you. That's exactly what it is, my sister. You see, I'm a Muslim. I pray five times a day. I preach, I teach, I do music. Um, people ask me all the time, how did you do this? How do you have time for all this? You see, you have to be responsible. If you are not responsible for yourself, for the things around you, for, 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 for your properties, then everything going to fall. Everything going to fall. So the wow. problem with this is that some of us are responsible, some are not responsible, some are medium responsible, so, and the rest of the world a majority of the world do not want to take blame or responsible responsibility for their actions. Mm. See, if I do something bad, if I made a mistake, if I make a boo-boo, I want you to take the blame. Mm. I think, brother, please, before, before we close this program, I think this is exactly what African, African have been struggling with because it's like African, we believe in, 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 in rejecting our responsibility. We believe in putting the blames on others. We really, we really not seeing the picture that we have to grow up from that babyhood. We really not seeing the picture that this is the right time for us to, as a nation, to take responsibility. And one of the responsibilities that I need, I think we need as urgent as possible is the, you, the responsibility of, of unification, of living in peace and in, in harmony because we are scattered. We are not together. We really, we are really not together. Um, do you have anything to say about that? Then we close our program or just conclude it on your own way. We still have one more minute to go. Go ahead, sir. Um, you know, you see the, 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 the city, Sierra Leone, before I came to America, Freetown, right? Um, we were having shortage of water. And on the radio, I understand that the reason why we're having this shortage of water is because a lot of people from the villages have left the villages 
and relocate to the city. Mm. So the city was not built for that amount of growth. And now, too many people, the valley that we have is too small to give or to produce water for everybody. Wow. So you see, these people who have left the villages, the provinces, and moved to the city, they are the ones that used to farm and bring to the city or to the big towns and do business. Now, they don't want to do that anymore. People don't want to do the local natural stuff that they used to do. They don't want to do that anymore. They all want to come to the city and sell this um, ready-made stuff instead of the natural stuff that we can produce and then live in the city, build their house in the city, get their nice car in the city. So the city, Freetown, is getting choked. Mm. Mm. And the villages are just open. Been abandoned. Have been abandoned. You see, my brother, we don't have much time left with us. Actually, I believe we really want to host you back because I know you have so much to offer. <laughs> and, and you teach us a lot this afternoon. You know, my people, what our brother is concluding on is we all have to take responsibility of our, our deeds, of our action, of our nation, of our villages, of our community. We all have responsibility and role to play. We, can, we have responsibility as religious leaders, as political leaders, and as even citizens. Because the citizens will not just abandon the, the, the responsibility on only the leaders. We all also have to change our mindset so that we're able to fit in and we all will see this change that we need for our continent, Africa, more especially for the sake of the next generation. So my brother, I want to appreciate you so, 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 so much for you taking your time out of your busy, very busy schedule to be part of us today. And inshallah, we believe that we would like to, uh, we would like to host you again because we know that even if we spend the next five hours here, you still have much to say. And everything you are saying is exactly what the, this generation needs. And I believe that this is what the next generation will need. And the next generation, we also appreciate your efforts coming out today to say your mind to this world. We really appreciate you as a team. And we want to say God cover you, God bless you and your family. And to all our listeners and viewers all around the world, we want to say thank you all for taking your time to be part of this pro program today. And by God's grace, we still continue. Tomorrow we have one of our beautiful sisters also from Sierra Leone. Whilst we are programming for, for our sisters, because we're going into the ladies now, we want more of our ladies to join us. We have sisters from Cameroon, from Togo, that we want to be part of us. So you just stay tuned by God's grace. We have many other great people coming on board to, to educate us and to, to lecture us with the love of God. God bless you all. And I wish everyone a very peaceful evening. And to the Christian, happy Sunday and uh, um, Easter in advance. And to the Muslim that are breaking fast, may Allah answer all your prayers. Amen. And have a peaceful evening. God bless you, sir. Have a peaceful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.